A small mollusk that lives off the coast of Australia has been hitting the headlines around the world. It appears in huge masses and devastates whole reefs. The crown of thorns starfish feeds off corals and at lightning speed. The prickly starfish has an insatiable appetite. It chews the coral polyps, adds digestive juices, and sucks the coral mush into its stomach. A single crown of thorns can destroy three to four square meters of corals a day, leaving behind only ugly, white, dead patches. Like all starfish, the crown of thorns uses so-called ambulacral tube feet to move around. Dozens of these small limbs protrude from its belly. The feet are moved by a combination of water pressure and muscle power. And there's a suction cup at the end of each limb. The prickly predators move from coral to coral, marauding and killing as they go. They're well protected against enemies. Their only weak spot is their soft underside. Close by, a predator lurks and waits for prey. The starfish has very few foes, and one of the most dangerous ones is the triton's trumpet. The snail seems to be totally immune to the toxic mucus that covers the crown of thorns' body. The marine snail with its beautifully shaped shell is a much sought after collector's item that has become very rare in recent years. The sad fact is that divers are depleting the population of one of only two species that could reduce the starfish invasion. The only other predators that specialize in crown of thorns are blowfish. Once a triton's trumpet has grabbed a victim, there's no escape. The snail eats the starfish alive, gobbling it up bit by bit. But killing a single individual hardly makes any difference. Once a year, the starfish mating season comes into full swing. The males eject a cocktail of sperm and hormones into the water. This, in turn, stimulates females who then send out clouds of tiny eggs. The eggs are fertilized somewhere in mid-water. The resulting larvae grow up as orphans. A female can produce a mind-boggling quantity of eggs per season. Larger starfish release more than six million eggs in one go. And that's the reason why the starfish population is only marginally curbed by fish that feed on their young. When there are six million or more eggs drifting about, a few kills hardly matter. After a couple of days, the sea is covered with a carpet of fertilized eggs. Two days later, the larvae hatch. In the beginning, they hardly resemble their parents. The larvae drift freely on the surface of the water, totally at the mercy of the ocean currents sweeping them this way and that. They journey hundreds of kilometers, swept on by the forces of the sea. After three weeks, the larvae turn into small starfish. These babies barely measure a millimeter. It will take a while until they become fully grown crown of thorn starfish, the prickly locusts of the sea. <laughs>